So we're at the new house now. I actually can show you the building today, what it looks like, the size of it, uh, the insulation, all the stuff that's going on with our new uh, business building. Obviously eBay and stuff's gonna be in there. We're gonna do videos and all that stuff's gonna be away from any personal area going forward. Since we're here, I got the camera on. We're gonna go and I'm just gonna show you a few things. Um, most of the stuff now is going into our bedroom area, what's gonna be our bedroom. Um, this is the stairs behind me that wanders on up uh, into the bedrooms upstairs and the extra room upstairs as well too. House was built in 1900. You won't find steps like this anywhere else. I just love the steps. Uh, I love the whole atmosphere of it. I love that it's a vintage house. Everything about me cries out vintage. I love old stuff and the house was just incredible to find in the condition that it's in. So we did extremely well. And I honestly can say that if it wasn't for reselling, I wouldn't own this house or the building, the property or anything else. Everything you see is now our stuff coming in here. Um, we've just got like the real breakable stuff. I don't pack up everything if we're moving just like a 30 minute away drive. It's not worth all the hassle. There's other ways to take it over. We just use large amounts of reusable cloth and it's no big deal. So you see I've got a few things going in here. This room is actually going to be our bedroom. We want the fireplace in here. We're gonna have a sofa. There's gonna be a bed. The whole works obviously. I've got some of our personal collectibles. I've got our um, obviously phonograph player, our collectible Christmas ornaments. Now we usually just keep that bowl out for Christmas. There's the Elvis that I, I have right here. This is a vintage banjo clock, probably about 70 or 80 years old right there. Most everything that uh, I've got out here is from Halls. We usually keep the stuff that we like the best, so you'll see a bunch of that. I've got an antique mirror that was a haul that was a $12 purchase. Even this Vintage uh, Japanese armoire was a pickup, everything. Not the turntable, but my barrister cabinets here. These came out of a hospital there from about 1920. Now we have two of these. I bought two at the same time. It was the Newton, Mississippi old hospital when they closed it down. We were lucky enough to get in there and we bought a bunch of stuff from there, but Japanese no dancer, uh, no, no dancer mask. Cast iron, it's an original, it's from the 1700s. Uh, and then we have art supplies uh, is what I have right here. This is nothing but art supplies. This is my pencil cabinet, just a ton of different pencils, all stuff that I use, oil paints in this box here, like a bunch of them. This is a secondary pencil box right here. I kind of hate to take it off, but. And then this cabinet is my doodad uh, cabinet. This is stuff I use constantly. So this is my main paint drawer you see here. If you don't know, I do a ton of artwork. I do stuff in the background that you probably wouldn't have a clue it was even mine. I've got several names that we do use. Pencils and extra stuff, my markers, inks, extra paints to back up. Um, there's paints in this one. There's some airbrushes in here, my pastels, more paints and pencils. This one is my templates and plastic and S-curves and all that kind of stuff in there. This is just my uh, daily used pe uh, paint brushes. And then I've got some other pastels in the bottom there. Now this was jostled around, so it'll have to be uh, set up. What's interesting about this, everything you see here, all of the art supply cabinets and cases are all pickups from halls. This cabinet right here is actually for player piano rolls. And I got this for free. I got a bench with it that I actually sold on eBay. It was an adjustable height bench and I got like 250 for it. It was free again. This was free with the player piano rolls in it. I sold the uh, player piano rolls. It was a Craigslist ad. No one wanted it. They had it up for sale for a while. No one messed with it at all. This is from a optometrist. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, something along that line. I've converted it to pencils. This one cost me 25 bucks. This was a $5 pickup. This is the second one. Those drawers that I showed you with the paintbrushes in them, 
is one of these that's been taken apart, the inside uh, accordion style uh, fan out ones. And this is, I think, watch uh, crystals was what originally was in this one here. And I had all the watch crystals, but I loved this little case um, with the four drawers on it. I paid 20 or 25 bucks and I ended up selling the watch crystals in lots for like 75 bucks a piece. And I had a whole bunch of them. This thing was full, each drawer had like, Geez, maybe 250, 250 watch crystals in it. And they were all numbered. You can still see some of the numbering and uh, such forth on it too. But we actually keep the best stuff that we get usually. Um, if it's something we like, we hang on to it for a while. Um, electronics are usually about the only thing that I put together myself or we buy new um, clothing, of course. The building itself still has cars in it, which you'll get to see in just a minute. I was able to get in there after... The Ferraris were pulled out. There was two Ferraris, a white and a red one. There was a Bugatti motorcycle. Um, it was like over a million dollars worth of cars was sitting in there. So anyway. Now I took cabinetry too. And this is a bookshelf that I personally made. Um, it's designed to cover and fit a lot of my art books. That's pretty much all that usually sits on this entire bookshelf here is just art books. I love putting stuff together. I took a cabinetry class and encasements. My father did carpentry on the side. He built cabinets on his days off. He hustled. And I've always been fond of building stuff and, and again with the artwork and stuff too. So this is just one that I did. I have another one that you'll see in, in the, the uh, actual eBay building probably that's bigger than this, but it's basically the same. I haven't stained it or anything, but um, this is what I do in some of my free time. I do stuff like this. Just a few more art supplies. I'll show you something cool in just a second here. Now, these are paintings that I personally did. This is Alkyd Oils, and you can see my name down on the bottom there, but this is from 1995. I've actually gotten better, obviously, since then. So this is, what, 28 years old when I did these. Now, if you were in Florida in 95, 96, you could have bought these in postcards all over the place at like, you know, tourist destinations and things like that. The frogs did very well. And if you got the Orlando Sentinel in uh, Florida, this was on the cover for the entertainment section um, for a show. I, I did a, a regional show back in the day. The Maitland Art Center in uh, obviously Maitland, Florida bought some of my work when I took some classes and was going to college in, in Florida. Anyway, all of this is, again, pickups from Halls. This is a nice watercolor uh, tab. Even the paper here I kept. Cutting boards. I've got some artwork in here, too. I do pastels, if you're not familiar. This is a pastel that I did here as well, too. Just, again, this is just our old family stuff that's here. I do crosshatch. I did some comic book illustrations back in the day. Now, this is faded, but this is like a... a it was black. Obviously, it doesn't look black anymore, but stippling and crosshatch and stuff. Just something that I've done in the past. And my wife was a model for me for years. And that's actually my wife right there from 1995 or thereabouts. Just a quick sketch. All of this, though, is basically stuff that I got from, you know, picking. I've shown you tablets of paper that's worth hundreds of dollars. You know, I've got some real nice masonite boards in here. I use Bristol, so this is, again, all haul items. Now, this is a drawing that I did of a pistol that I actually owned. It was, a, again, a reseller pickup a haul item. This is just a pencil sketch. This is a uh, flintlock from, I think it was 1660s, 1670s era. It's one I actually had. It was a Spanish one. Ended up selling it, but uh, anyway, just a quick sketch there. Now, here is one more item that we got at a haul. This was 25 bucks. We've had it for years. This came from a little tiny thrift store. It's light as can be because it's just fiberglass. I know it's a little dark in there. There's a very nice, well-known artist painting. I'll talk about that at another point, but that's a very expensive painting. This is the most expensive painting we've ever gotten right there. Again, I'll discuss it maybe in another video, but this thing is the bomb. I have always loved this thing. If you've seen some of the Weeble videos, this has been in the background of our Weeble videos. Uh, I think the first one for sure. Just like masks, the wife and I both love masks. Um, Buddha, my original um, uh, lava lamp from the late 50s, early 60s, you can obviously tell. 
For those who don't know, I worked at Disney. This is me and the wife back in the day from 1992 uh, when I was a Disney employee. This is the garage, obviously. But something else that we got going on in here. Let me turn these around here. For those M&M fans too, I've had these in storage for, geez, like five or six years, seven years, I'm sorry. We've had these for seven years sitting in a storage area. Obviously we have room now, so we're bringing stuff over, but I paid 25 bucks a piece for these from a garage sale two doors from my house when we were first moving in. And the guy had them sitting out there. I couldn't believe they're 25 bucks. Again, this is a while ago. This was, again, seven or eight years ago when, uh, when I bought these. Maybe it's been even longer than that. I don't know, it's been a very long time that I've had these. Again, these are haul. I picked those up on a haul. Same with the sign. Now, I have two of these. I've got one that hangs on a wall and then this one. It's one of the kind of signs that would sit out like an easel sign where it would sit on the sidewalk in about 1967, I think is when this one was from. And it both says the same thing on both sides, closed for vacation. So either direction you're walking, you'd be able to uh, obviously see that they're closed for vacations. Now included with the house was another lawnmower, which I'm happy about. And then the ride-on lawnmower, which looks like it's in pretty darn good condition. Believe it or not, I had one of these um, when we first moved here. We used to live on 60 acres in Mississippi and we didn't know what to do with it. We had small yards. We weren't, you know, looking to buy a house. We had one for a very long time. And, um, you know, I gave it to a cousin of ours for helping us with some other things. So they still use it. She drives it out in Michigan and they cut the grass with it. But this one's the next model up from the one that we had. So I, I know what these cost. This is a fairly nice one. These were included in the house. I asked for the lawnmowers. You never know unless you ask. And I know a lot of people say, well, how are you going to get the lawnmower? Well, you just ask. Include the lawnmower, the whole works. Now, the insulation you see in here is the same insulation that's on the building. You know, these are two by fours, and you can see how much, and this is, again, low density, um, closed cell spray foam insulation. It's not the, the cheap stuff. This garage alone probably cost, geez, a couple thousand dollars a wall, maybe $4,000 total to do this garage with the spray foam. So let's head on over and take a look at the building itself. Here's the back area from the garage. And we're gonna hop into the building right here. So this is the building. There's a 83 Maserati and a convertible spider fiat we are going to close it all in and breaker panel over here if i can get it opened this is just for the building so the ebay building has its own everything sockets all the way around the wall so i said we are going to frame up some of this but it's all insulated with uh, obviously you can see how thick some of the insulation is. So again, there's a lot of insulation in here. This is closed cell um, high density insulation, which is better than like um, fiberglass. I mean, it's really good insulation. I looked it all up. It cost a fortune like 20 grand to put this in. So it's all a solid building. These are the barn door areas, which we are going to rip out and close off. As you can see, there's two big barn doors. Uh, all told, it's like uh, 1,600 ground feet. We're gonna have storage up on the top on part of it too. I have a second half over on the other side over here. So you will see this building full of our stuff uh, very soon. This Sunday, we will have it. Um, I don't know when this video is gonna post, so uh, just FYI, but this is where the barn doors are, and these will all be uh, closed off. I've got wood already there, so all I have to do is get some two by fours. We'll insulate it, and the whole works on that. But again, this is the whole thing. Let me stand all the way back to the side so you can see it from one side to the other. It's a big area, so this is the new room. This is eBay room. It's a massive size. It's bigger than, you know, houses, so it's a, it's a very nice size space. I can hang stuff from the ceiling, 
very sturdy. It's got eye girders all steel up on the top. So again, it's been well taken care of. It is airtight where the insulation is. It goes all the way down and wraps around the floor, as you can see. So it's sealed all the way around, all the way around here, as you can see. There's not a drop of water in here. It's snow and moist outside. So again, he's lined up sockets, outlets, all the way around the entire building. I've got one of his friends, the uh, prior owner, is uh, helping him pack up the last little bit here. Uh, but again, this is it. This is the building that we've been waiting for. Nine months worth of looking, and this is it. Well, there you have it. That's a quick tour of just a little bit of what's going on here. You get to see the building, a few other things we brought over. Now, the majority of our personal business stuff is still not here. We wanted to get it all into there. I do have probably about 50 or 60 eBay boxes of unlisted merchandise, maybe more than that. Um, in fact, I can show you a few. That's all pretty much eBay stuff right there. There's some more around the corner right there. Now, this is stuff that um, I didn't get uh, into plastic totes. I've got hundreds of plastic totes. They're all not gonna be over here immediately. We're gonna divide. I've got a secondary storage coming up, so there'll be other uh, videos coming up showing you as well what's going on too. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. another planet with a cereal as big as Honeycomb? Inhabitant of Vesuvius! The starship Honeycomb. Our cereal is bigger than yours. Impossible, Earthlings. We'll prove it. If you fail, you're doomed. This is our cereal. And this is Honeycomb. Ah, Honeycomb's big and it's got a big bite. How's Honeycomb cereal's part of a balanced breakfast? Take Honeycomb for your planet. My people will love the big bite. Is there another planet with a cereal as big as Honeycomb?